All right. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. James Toussaint, and I'm here uh, to present the um, MedShape soft tissue webinar. Specifically, we're going to talk about the, the, um, the Eclipse and Morphix devices. Um, I know the slide says January 26th. I, do be, <laughs> I am aware that uh, it is February. Um, a little bit about me. I am a graduate of the NYU School of Medicine. I went to Harvard for my orthopedic residency training, and subsequently, I did my fellowship at the um, Foot and Ankle Institute at Ortho Carolina. Um, I am a partner at the Orthopedic Institute in Gainesville, Florida, and I have a background in um, healthcare um, investment banking and um, angel investing. So on to the Eclipse and Morphix devices. <clears throat> what the Eclipse and Morphix devices have in common is that they are made out of a proprietary um, uh, shape memory peak. This is specifically called the Altera uh, system, so peak Altera. Now what that allows um, the device to do is to uh, basically uh, change its shape from the optimal delivery shape to an optimal uh, shape for fixation. So what the surgeon and the patients get are the same strength, durability, radiolucency, and biocompatibility as regular peak. However, um, the implant can change its shape to um, optimally improve fixation. Um, so on to the uh, Morphix device. So the Morphix suture anchor is a two-part uh, sheath and bullet system. There is an eyelet, as you can see there, and the eyelet is um, surrounded by wings, and the wings are um, what change shape when deployed. So on the left, you see the wing and eyelet um, uh, together, but the wings are compressed into a compact, low-profile shape. And then subsequently, on deployment, the wings expand over the eyelet to lock into the bone and increase the surface area. The um, wings expand to approximately two times their size um, from the initial, uh, initial insertion into deployment. And here I have the um, uh, list of different Morphix sizes from two and a half to five and a half millimeters. And, um, the uh, size of the implant essentially uh, doubles once it's deployed. Here's a paper by Yakaki and colleagues uh, demonstrating the biomechanical performance and improved pullout strength of the Morphix anchor. Yakaki et al. did demonstrate that anchor fixation was dependent on its bearing area or the area of the anchor projected underneath the bone. The Morphix wing expansion during deployment allows for the bearing area to double, um, offering superior fixation compared with anchors of a similar size with less bearing area. Uh, the uh, Morphix uh, device continues to expand to an additional 20% postoperatively under cyclic loading. Uh, that allows for fixation strength to be maintained for all sizes. So as the uh, patient begins to weight bear and, in, and increase uh, in their uh, rehab performance, the um, pull-out strength of the implant improves. And this is an, um, a, a picture of the disposable uh, inserter handle for the uh, Morphix um, anchor. And on the right, you'll see the um, drill and drill guide that's used to uh, drill the, um, the tunnel for the implant. Onto the Eclipse. The Eclipse is a soft tissue anchor. It features uh, similarly a two-part system. In this case, it's a sheath and a bullet design. What it does is it offers an innovative um, non-rotational deployment approach for reattaching the soft tissue to bone. <clears throat> On the left, you have the initial compressed shape. Um, you have the sheath, and uh, just proximal to the sheath is the bullet. And upon deployment, the bullet expands the sheath to um, improve the fixation of the uh, Eclipse anchor. So some of the um, features of the Eclipse are number one, it does not rotate during insertion, so thus it will 
uh, preserve the tendon orientation. Um, the soft tissue texture on the sheath and um, non-rotational deployment obviously will decrease the risk of soft tissue damage to the tendon. Um, and obviously, upon expansion, um, you can imagine that this will improve the strength of fixation. The uh, uniform compression against the bone does improve and maximize the uh, tissue to bone contact for, um, for tendon to bone healing. The uh, paper by uh, Christensen and uh, colleagues um, essentially shows that uh, there is a superior uh, tendon pull-off strength compared with the um, uh, similar uh, size tenodesis screws. Um, additionally, the bullet and sheath design was shown to preserve the integrity of the tendon as I previously mentioned. The uh, graph here, I know there's a lot of data on here, but essentially the takeaway point is that a, um, on the left and on the far right of the graph, you'll see that a similarly uh, sized eclipse um, um, uh, implant will have a superior load to failure when compared to its, um, uh, you know, competitor. So specifically in this case, you have the nine by 20 millimeter eclipse uh, versus the Arthrex nine by 23 millimeter by a screw on the left. And you'll see that the load to failure is much higher for the eclipse implant versus the Arthrex by a screw. This is um, a, uh, basically a, a picture of the accessory um, instrumentation. So you'll have the deployment gun for the Eclipse implant, you have a suture loop to um, secure your tendon. You've got a tendon sizer, the, um, a, a tendon fork for a blind tunnel. You've got a loop as well as the drill bit. <clears throat> Uh, here's a list of the different diameters and lengths. I uh, tend to use the uh, 5 by 20 in a number of cases, and I'll show an example of that later. The um, uh, so Again, there's a lot of data on here, but essentially uh, our colleagues at uh, MedShape have put together a graph or a chart, if you will, that um, tells you the uh, most commonly used procedures as well as the most commonly used uh, implant sizes to give me an idea of, uh, of what um, is used clinically. The arrows on the left um, uh, denote the cases that I tend to use the, um, the implants for. So as far as the Morphix, I would use it for a brostrum or deltoid uh, repair. On the Eclipse, I would use it commonly for an FHL transfer or an FDL transfer. Um, I'll go through two cases. Uh, the first case is a case of ankle instability. It's a 42-year-old woman who came into my clinic with recurrent ankle instability, symptoms for over two years after a sprain while jogging. She's, um, you know, tried and failed multiple non-operative modalities, including physical therapy. She now uses a brace for any high-impact activity. On her exam, there was no significant tenderness. She did have a mild ankle effusion. Uh, of course, she had an anterior ankle jar exam that was positive. And uh, the hind foot and um, arch were uh, relatively neutral uh, with a slight um, valgus hind foot. Here are the x-rays. Not surprisingly, the x-rays are relatively benign. The MRI does give a picture of a torn ATFL and a disrupted CFL. So in this case, I used two Morphix 2.5 millimeter anchors. Um, on the um, clinical picture here, you can see the placement of the tunnels and the um, uh, Morphix anchors already deployed. Uh, this set of pictures here, really highlights the uh, reason that I like to use the um, Morphix anchors. Um, on the left side, the anchors are in place. So I've got two anchors. That's the same patient as the previous uh, picture. And on the right side, you can see that I am testing the strength of the anchors and I'm lifting the patient's leg uh, uh, solely by pulling on the anchors. So this gives me a lot of faith in the uh, pullout strength of the implants. 
So a few pearls about the mode fix. Number one, um, you want to uh, confirm the trajectory of the metal cannula, cannula excuse me, prior to inserting and uh, malleting the implant. You want to make sure that the wings and the eyelet uh, um, uh, definitely go into the tunnel prior to um, deploying the, the implant. The other thing is that the wings of the Morphix um, inserter match the um, match the wings of the implant. So uh, essentially, you want to put it into the sagittal plane. So um, the so if you align the implant in the sagittal plane, then when the wings deploy, they will deploy in the sagittal plane, and you can avoid penetration into the ankle joint. And as I mentioned before, uh, feel uh, feel free to test the anchor. In my case, I lifted the leg with the anchor, but I don't necessarily recommend that you do that <laughs> in, in every case, but um, it just goes to show that, um, that I trust the implant. Second case is a case of uh, posterior tibial tendon deficiency. A 44-year-old woman came to my clinic with approximately one year's worth of uh, medial sided left hind foot pain after a fall. Um, I put the patient through the series of non-operative uh, measures, including physical therapy, inserts, and bracing, anti-inflammatories. Uh, that said, uh, she continued to be symptomatic. The patient did have uh, tenderness over the posterior tibial tendon on exam. She had some difficulty performing a single leg heel rise. Her arch was only slightly depressed, and she had neutrospite hind foot valgus. Um, in her series of X-rays. Um, Nothing uh, too dramatic, uh, no accelerated degenerative changes, relatively uh, neutral alignment, as I mentioned. Here on the MRI, the short arrow uh, denotes the flexor digitorum longus tendon. The long arrow denotes the tear within the posterior tibialis tendon. And in the clinical picture, uh, the um, uh, pickups or forceps are um, displaying the tear that's seen in the posterior tibialis tendon. In order to um, uh, address this patient's pathology, I decided to do a posterior tibial tendon debridement with an FDL transfer. I used the Eclipse anchor, and um, uh, the uh, kit is shown here. So step by step, the posterior tibialis tendon was debrided and resected. Uh, it had poor excursion and the, um, the tendon was just too degenerated to uh, salvage. And then I harvested the posterior tibialis tendon. I'm sorry, I harvested the flexor digitorum longus tendon as seen in the uh, picture on the left. I used the clip whip to um, uh, secure the tendon. The next step, I use the uh, sizer to size the uh, uh, FDL tendon. You can see here it measured approximately a um, five millimeters. And then under fluoroscopic guidance, I um, determined the uh, insertion point and tunnel within the navicular. And um, and here you can see uh, drilling. Um, uh, over reaming and I'm sorry, passing the uh, passing pen and then reaming over the passing pen. I believe I used a size five reamer to prepare the bone tunnel. And subsequently, I like to use the suture lasso really just to confirm the tunnel trajectory um, rather than um, uh, rather than just to pass the uh, pass the suture. And then uh, the next step, I um, pull the tendon through, um, and pull it securely, align the implant through the tunnel, and mallet the implant. Of great importance, though, is you can see that I'm holding the um, the gun um, over the um, and near the barrel as opposed to at the handle, and I'll go over the importance of that later. Uh, and here is a close-up of the fully deployed and secured FDL tendon using the 5 by 20 millimeter Eclipse anchor. So a few pearls. The first pearl is that um, 
In the cases where the bullet does not completely go through the sheath, you can use a bone tamp and a mallet to advance the bullet. That's in cases where it's uh, still proud after deployment. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I tend to use um, uh, my hand over the over the uh, barrel as opposed to over the handle of the gun. The risk is that if you're holding the handle, you may prematurely deploy the implant. And so I, uh, one way to avoid doing that is to, um, is to uh, hold it over the barrel as opposed to the, uh, to the handle. A few more pearls, um, bone tunnel and implant placing um, and selecting the tunnel diameter, the implant diameter, et cetera. I would say for surgeons that are new to this device, I would recommend um, initially drilling a one-to-one -one, uh, size tunnel. So if your tendon transfer is measured to be a five, then I would drill a size five tunnel. And if uh, the patient has really good bone, then you may use uh, the same um, reamer to sort of core out an additional half millimeter uh, in order to help um, securing the implant. Otherwise, you may find that putting the implant in is really difficult. But for patients that have um, osteopenic bone, a one-to-one -one size um, bone tunnel tends, tends to be okay. Okay, thank you very much.